right, well, we are having a celebration Sunday, as you could tell. Uh, we don't normally have balloons and frilly stuff up, but uh, we, could, we could do it every week. I'm, I'm okay with celebrating. Let me, uh, let me pray. We're going to get in real quick, a uh, short message today uh, in, in light of all that has happened, but uh, it is important that we cover this. So let's pray together. God, we want to say thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for all of the victories uh, that you accomplished in this church and in this community over the course of the last year. God, we want to give you all the honor and praise for it. God, teach us now through your word and your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to read a quick passage of scripture um, just to uh, tie all this in. Uh, In Hebrews 7, this is not in the screen, it won't be on the screen, but in Hebrews 7, in verse 1, it says, For this Melchizedek, so Melchizedek, there's a big explanation to that we'll get into. He was an Old Testament name. Uh, He was a forever priest anyway. uh, It says, King of Salem and priest of the Most High. High God met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to him, Abraham apportioned a tenth part of everything. He is first by translation of his name, king of righteousness. And then he is also of Salem, that is king of peace. He is without father or mother or genealogy, having neither uh, beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the son of God, he continues as priest forever, or continues a priest forever. So he was a, in the Old Testament, Melchizedek was a priest and a king. Normally you wouldn't have those two together. And, and he's going to go into this later to talk about how Jesus is also a priest and a king. And we'll, we'll get into some of those things here shortly. Today I want to talk about, just really quick, if you haven't already, again, picked up on it, this is a celebration day. And we're not just celebrating to celebrate, we're celebrating uh, victory. Can I get an Amen. All right, like we are, it's Jesus and what he's doing through the church, which he promised to do. That's what we celebrate today. In the last couple of years, and speaking of celebration, in the last couple of years as a community, we've had a lot of things to celebrate, right? You guys are party animals, man. I'm just telling you. All right. Um, so, if, in case you need a reminder of some of the things that we have uh, been able to celebrate over the last uh, few years, um, uh, we've celebrated football state championships. Amen? Yeah, good stuff. I mean, yeah, that's amazing. I love being able to celebrate fo- football. Maybe we can get some other state championships. And I know we've had tennis uh, a few years ago, and maybe we can continue to work our way up in, in other athletics. But we, we celebrated football state championship, back-to-back state championships. If you live on the other side of the border, they celebrated a championship this year too. And so, uh, man, just a lot of celebration going on in our community. Um, earlier, back in October, we had a chance to celebrate something. Can we, what, you, you guys pay attention to the screen? That's a different deal for Bama. Biggest third down in Bryce Young's career. That went in October. You need 10. Play clock at four. Yeah. From the pocket. Launching downfield. There you go. That wasn't October. That was just about a month ago. Anybody celebrate that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. I thought there might be a little bit of a, an excitement in here when they saw Ring pick that thing off one more time, baby. Right? Just one more time. All right. We also, back in October, did get to celebrate something else. Anybody remember this? Scream. Here we go. High fly ball to left and good bye. Yes. Solaire with a monster blast into left in the break. By the way, I was reading on the news yesterday, his ball just landed. <laughs> that thing was a crush shot. And so as... As, as a people, our community, we've been able to celebrate a lot of fantastic things. I mean, from state championships to national championships to World Series victories. We've had a lot of opportunities to celebrate um, over the last little bit. But uh, when, when teams have successful seasons, they end those successful seasons like this. Let me show you a couple of things. We're going to put a couple of pictures up on the screen for you. Uh, here's picture number one, maybe, hopefully. There it is, and you can't see it, it's uh, really dark, but that is what, and Osceola is known as what? Party at the red light, meet at the red light, yep, when big games are won, that's where everybody meets up after the game, right? Uh, Also, uh, relating to those other two things, when you win championships, they do these things for you, that's called a what? Parade, a a celebration parade, and there's another picture we have of another parade, and there was another one, yep, following uh, the national title by your beloved Bulldogs, which pains me to talk about. But, you know, even a blind dog will find a bone every now and then. Um, <laughs> but listen, if we, can, 
If we can carve out time to celebrate things like the achievements of athletic people, certainly we can carve out at least a day once a year, hopefully more than that, to celebrate all that Jesus is doing in our church, in our lives, among and through us. I mean, it has been an amazing, amazing journey over the last, um, last year plus. I mean, really, uh, we could go back more than that, but we're celebrating 2021 right now. So what an amazing year it was. And it was full of ups and downs, but man, they were mostly up. And we, see, we got to see God do some amazing, amazing things that I'm going to share with you here in a minute. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles uh, to 2 Corinthians. We're going to be in chapter 2. It's going to be real brief, so you guys just hang on. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 2, beginning in verse 14. Listen to what Paul writes to the church at Corinth. He says, but thanks be to God who in Christ always, everybody say always, always always leads us in triumphal procession. So if you don't feel very triumphant today, it's not because God's not leading you. It's just you haven't arrived there yet. He always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death. To the other, a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? And I want to just give you a little bit of context and then wrap up the message. So the the picture that he gives us here when he says that he always leads us in triumphal procession. In Roman culture, you know, whenever there was a battle to be fought, the king would leave the city. He would ride out to the battle. They would go out and if they won a big battle, if they were able to stomp back, you know, push back the enemies and win victories and defeat the other king, what would happen is word would get sent back to the city and they would begin to share with everyone, hey, the king won, the king won, the king won. And as they started to return, the king would stop for a moment. Uh, He would put on a clean robe. He would then um, prepare himself to reenter the city. And when he would reenter the city, some things would happen. People would line up the streets just like we saw with the Atlanta Braves and the Georgia Bulldogs. They would line the streets. There would be a parade. They would celebrate. It would be a big, big deal. Why? Because there was someone, there was another nation, there was another king out there that his desire was to come to capture us, to enslave us. And because our king went out and was victorious, we are now no longer under the threat of that enemy king. So the the king of that city would ride back in on his horse and behind him there would be a parade of people. There would be several things going on. One of the things that he would do is he would, um, he, would have, he would be riding in on a golden chariot surrounded by his officers. The parade would also include a display of all the, the spoils from the battle. So all the things that they captured from that city, they would bring back with them. It's kind of like when some of these athletic teams, they play for these um, cups or, you know, they, they have this, I don't know, there's some of those Big Ten schools. I know they have these things that it's like a trophy, and whoever wins that gets to take it back, keep it for a year. I think, uh, I don't know if Fitzgerald and Irwin have anything like that. I remember a high school down south, we had what was called the battle for the paddle. And there was a river that ran between two communities. And whatever high school won, it got to keep the paddle for the year. It was bragging rights. And so when the, when the king would come back in, they would bring spoils from the other city as a way of celebrating or the other people to celebrate, the people of the community to celebrate the fact that they won. And hey, not only did we win, we get the spoils. And so then when, as they're riding back in, the parade would also include the spoils, but uh, it would also include captive enemies, right? Like they would have these guys that would follow in, so they would capture some of the fellas, and they would bring them in, and they would have them tied off, and they would be bound. And so as, as he came in, it was a symbol of, we defeated him. They're, they're not trying to rebuild over there. There's no other army. Like we got everybody. We, we took care of the king, and now we've got some of the folks. We've got some of their people. The Roman priests would also be in the parade, and as the Roman priests were coming in, they would have these uh, incense deals on a rope, and they would come in, and they'd be burning incense, and they're waving these things as they march through the streets, so you can literally smell the aroma of victory. The procession would follow a special route through the city, would end at the Circus Maximus. And when they would end there, what would happen is they would take all these captive soldiers, and they would throw them into an arena, and these, these captive, uh, these, these people that they held captive would entertain the rest of the people by fighting wild beasts. That was what they did. That was kind of, it was brutal. It was, it was a horrible way to treat people, but that's what they did back in those days. 
It was a special day in Rome when the citizens retreated to full-scale Roman triumph. Now, Jesus Christ, is Paul's giving us a picture here of Jesus using this imagery that they would fully understand. He's going, listen, Jesus always leads us in triumphal procession. Jesus never loses Jesus is always victorious. And because Jesus is always victorious, we are also part of his kingdom. Those who call upon the name of Jesus, those who belong to him, those who are a part of his church, we are always led by him in triumphal procession. We are part of the parade. We get to experience the joy of what it is to see Jesus not only push back the enemy of darkness, but to rescue people. Another thing that they would do is they would go into enemy territory if there were any uh, people from that city who had been taken captive by the other king, they would pull them out and they would take them and they would rescue them. So we kind of represent that. We get to walk in. We get to experience the victory of Jesus. We are part of the procession. We are part of the ones that we were once slaves who were, who were taken captive by our sin nature. We were under the sentence of death according to um, what scripture tells us that, um, you know, that we have all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. All, all of us, every single one of us is, have sinned. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So that's where Jesus comes in. Jesus not only shed his blood, as the Lamb of God, but then he, he came back. You know, he conquered death. And now, uh, because of that, we are able to be empowered by his spirit as a church. And then we also get to walk in victory. We don't ever have to live in defeat. Jesus Christ, our great commander-in-chief, came to foreign soil, this earth. And he completely defeated the enemy. That is Satan. And instead of killing 5,000 people as would have been done back then, he gave his life for more than 5,000 people. I mean, we know that 3,000 on the day of Pentecost and another 2,000 shortly after, but then throughout, from that time forward, once the church was instituted, millions of people have professed faith in Jesus Christ, have experienced the joy of knowing him as their priestly king, who has a ministry that will last forever, who always leads us in triumphant victory. And the beautiful part of it is, is he has given his life, not just for us, but for the whole world. And what we get to do, and this is the reason that we're celebrating today. We're celebrating today because through you, God did tremendous work last year. Don't ever miss that. Don't ever think that the reason that the numbers and all the stuff that we saw up here, none, listen, without you, none of this stuff happens. And I want to share some more numbers with you. The the, the victorious, uh, going back to Rome here real quick, the victorious general son would walk behind the father's chariot, sharing in his victory, and that's what we get to do today as believers following Christ's triumph. And I want to say this, we don't fight for victory, we fight from victory. We have already been declared victorious, Jesus has already been declared victorious, and we're simply following him. We don't have to fight for the victories. Jesus has already fought the battle. We're just fighting from victory. And our job is to go and help other people find the freedom and the victory that we have experienced as followers of Jesus. And because of your faithfulness as the body of Christ, last year we won some really important victories. And I'm not just talking about renovating a sanctuary. That was a huge victory, which I'm thankful for. But we also... Um, had, in, in spite of being shut down kind of for half a year as the space was being renovated, we weren't fully shut down, but we had a really small group of people that would come and worship back there. Of course, the rest of our stuff was online, but because of your faithfulness last year, um, our church, we received 24 new members. That's basically a person, a new member of our church every other week on average, and we had 10 baptisms, which represents new life. Amen, Jake, me and you, man. We, we really got to help you guys learn how to party just a little bit better. I mean, I know Baptist stands for, you know, the Greek word for Baptist is dull, but, you know, we can break that. We can change that definition. It seems to be popular in our culture today. 24 new members, 10 baptisms. Our, our food ministry, which you guys help support, our food ministry, we fed, uh, we, we passed out 500 bags of food to people in our community last year. And I want to say thank you to Glenda Joe, to Nancy, to Mark, to Holly, 
and all those who come up here to help in this ministry. I hope I didn't forget anybody. If I did, please forgive me. But we, and then not only that, but let me show you one more video. It's about a minute long. We're going to put this up. This is, um, last year we took up during vacation Bible school and throughout the year we took up money uh, even into October to help feed families in Haiti. And what you're about to see is your money went down to prepare um, basically buckets with beans and rice and, and the bucket is used for water to carry water. And it was an opportunity for us to minister to people in the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere to feed a family for a whole week. And that's what we collected. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the kids are gathered up. They don't, you know, here when we have a raffle, everybody knows what a raffle is. But up until about a year ago, these kids in Haiti didn't know what a raffle was. And so they did one and they passed out tickets and then they called off the numbers. And and there there was an interesting result The kid who won was obviously happy, but the kids who lost were devastated. And they didn't see that coming. You know, in America, we go, okay, well, I'll just, you know, maybe better luck next time. Not these kids. They were devastated that they didn't win. So when Christmas came around, this is what we took up. There's a bunch of kids up here who are going to be a part of a raffle for probably the second time in their life. And they think there's only going to be one winner. I want you to look at the video. Okay, now there, now there. See them, see them. No! buckets and so these kids had the opportunity you heard them start screaming they started screaming when every one of them found out that they were a winner that every one of them were going to be able to take home a bucket with rice and beans and oil and they were going to they were going to have a bucket that when uh, they don't have indoor plumbing like we have so they have to walk with a bucket to a pump put the water in the bucket if you can imagine five gallons of water and then some of them walk down the road with it on their head how they do that I have no idea But they were so excited to know that they were going to go home and their family was going to eat and eat well for the week of Christmas. And so I want to say thank you to all of you for everything that you do to make ministry happen in this church. The way you give, the way you serve, the way you invite other people to be a part of what God's doing. And what I want to challenge you with as we get to wrap up, I'm going to ask our musicians to go ahead and start making their way. so as we celebrate today what all that God did in 2021, I also want to celebrate what God's going to do from this day forward because he always leads us in triumphal procession. We're, it's good to look back and celebrate, but we don't live our life in the rearview mirror. We live our life through the windshield. That's the direction we're going. And so though God did some amazing things in 2021, God's not done yet. Until God calls us all home and he rolls up the skies and we go flying away like uh, Rhett sang about in the song a while ago, we're not done. And so we still have some things to do. And so if we want to celebrate 2023 in a much bigger way, and I'm convinced that next year in 2023 when we're celebrating the year of 2022, I'm convinced you'll be much louder and much celebratory, much more celebratory. You'll be more excited, I believe. But how do we make sure that Our celebration in 2023 is much better than even this one. Number one, show up. Show up. What do I mean by that? First of all, I want you and pray that you would consider getting connected to a Sunday school or a connect group. Okay? Sunday school meets here 930 in the morning to about 
uh, 10, 15, 10, 20, and they meet in classrooms all throughout this facility. And the reason is because we need to sit under the teaching of God's word. And you will find relationships within those communities, whether it's a Sunday school or, if, matter of fact, in a few minutes, uh, we're going to release you and we're going to invite you, if you are not a part of a Sunday school class or a connect group, to make your way back through these hallways all the way back to the fellowship hall. And you'll have an opportunity there to meet some small group and Sunday school leaders who would love to have you a part of their classes and their groups. Because it's there that you will build relationships with people. In a world that's more connected than ever before, people feel more alone than they ever have. And we don't want you to be alone. And God did not desire for you to be alone. He said it's not good that man should be alone. So he he gave us each other. And so we want to encourage you, get connected, be a part of it. And listen, it's okay to go try out a class or try out a group. If you go there and you go, hey, let's try this one out. If it's not the right one for you, then find another one. We're, We're okay with that. We just want you to find biblical community So show up to Sunday school or connect group. Show up to Sunday service. We were talking about this this week, and it was part of my devotion, and then I had several conversations about it. But do you know why it's important for for us to show up to a worship service and to show up to a Sunday school class? Because James tells us that the word of God is a mirror. How uncomfortable would you be on a daily basis if we went to your house and took out all of your mirrors? Does that make anybody uncomfortable? How would you know what you look like before you head out the door? How would you know if you don't have drool just dried up on the side of your face? How would you know if your hair is not right and some of us don't have as much as others? But how would you know? And and so as much as that like creeps you out and makes you a little bit uneasy to not have a mirror in your house, The word of God, James says, is a mirror for the very same reason. We read it, we sit under the teaching of it, and as we do, what happens is we see ourselves in light of God's word. And then we go, oh, there's something there that I need to get fixed. And so we, get, we, we pray about it, we, we submit it to God, we make the changes, we repent if repentance is, if it's a sinful thing, and then we begin to walk in the way of the Lord, and as we do, we avoid the disasters that would have confronted us if we would have stayed on the path. That's why it's so important to sit under the teaching of the word of God on a consistent basis. So show up, be here. Be here on Wednesday nights. We have great Bible studies going on. Youth, kids, we got everything going on. Be here on Wednesday nights. We're going through a a theology class right now. We're only two weeks in, so you're not far behind. So show up, be here. Let me give you the last couple things here. Uh, The last couple things are... Be, um, serve faithfully, get involved, find somewhere to serve, pray fervently, pray about the things that you need to pray about, be in prayer for the church, be in prayer for 2022, that we would see God change more lives this year than ever before. It's great to take up, you know, more money than we've ever taken up, but we, you know, the reason that we do it is so that we can do ministry so that we can see people's lives change. That's it. That's it. And we want to see more people's lives changed. We want to see this whole community claim Jesus as their Savior and then walk in his ways because we believe that it's then that we get to walk with him in triumphal procession. And then just invite. You just keep inviting people. You guys are so good about inviting people to come. Just keep inviting. Keep inviting. Because when people show up, they'll sit under the teaching of the word of God. And the apostle Paul said in Romans 1 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God to salvation. And when people sit under the teaching of the word of God, the Holy Spirit does his job and he leads people to life change. So show up. We want you to serve. We want you to pray. We want you to invite.